Welcome to Room Now. I'm Michelle Petrie, and I'm going to be giving my personal viewpoint on the SLE posters and abstracts presented today, November 6th. I wanted to start with what we already know. Here is a very important study published by Michael Ward that showed the racial disparities in end-stage kidney disease in lupus, not just African-Americans. And by the way, this study put Hispanic American end-stage renal disease from lupus on the map as well. Now, end-stage kidney disease all by itself is an independent risk factor for mortality in lupus. What we showed back in 2015 is that it is also an independent risk factor for cardiovascular damage, which is one of the leading causes of death in lupus. And here at the bottom, you can see renal damage with a hazard ratio of over two. So what's new at the meeting from today? This is the study presented by Ram Singh at the plenary session. Now, initially, you would think the results are good because there is a reduction in lupus nephritis deaths, but there are still those racial disparities with more deaths in African-Americans and Hispanic-Americans than Caucasians. But here's the really bad news. You can clearly see that the deaths are increasing from 2015 to 2019. Now, I don't have an explanation for this, but you could say the take home message is, we need better therapies for lupus nephritis. And yes, thankfully we have two new therapies, baclosporin and belimumab. But I think the message is actually more complicated than that. So I wanted to go over this study presented by Ali Duarte Garcia today on the problem of multimorbidities. Now you can see that our patients always have more multimorbidity than their racial controls. But in particular, our patients who are facing multimorbidity are our African-American patients and our Hispanic patients. Now, the most important morbidity, as far as I'm concerned, is probably hypertension. But there are over 170 potential comorbidity studies in his analysis. So I think it's incumbent upon us to treat all these comorbidities as well. But all of you know that I continue my mantra, the P in prednisone stands for poison. And you'll remember that prednisone has a dose response relationship with cardiovascular events. In this model that included all the traditional cardiovascular risk factors and the disease activity for which I had prescribed the prednisone. So what was new today? Well, this important study presented by Mia Chandler. And this is based on Medicaid patients, I think particularly important because a lot of our lupus nephritis patients will be under the Medicaid program. And what she did was to do a trajectory analysis and found four different trajectories of prednisone use. The one at the top is obviously the worst, isn't it? That's the persistently high dose trajectory with a mean dose of 19.4. Now you may be thinking this is all explained by lupus nephritis, but it can't be, or it should not be, because as you know, both the ACR and the ULAR guidelines for treatment of lupus nephritis emphasize how important it is to reduce glucocorticoids. So what she found is if the patient was of non-white race or ethnicity, and male sex, and by the way, men do worse than women with lupus nephritis, they had a significantly greater odds of being in that persistently high steroid dose trajectory. So, you know, a very obvious take home message, I think is we're not gonna be successful until we also reduce this reliance on glucocorticoids. They're only supposed to be used short term for lupus nephritis. So to recap, this was a day full of important papers on the racial disparities of lupus and in particular lupus nephritis. Thank you all for joining Room Now.